So the project I'm part of is called the Violet Satellite Project. Uh, it's part of the Space Systems Design Studio run by uh, Professor Mason Peck here on campus. And um, our goal is to create an entry for the Air Force Research Lab's University NanoSat project. Uh, so this is a two-year effort to design, build, test, and fly a spacecraft with a mission of your choosing. Being a, a systems engineer on the project, uh, I've needed to manage and be, a, be the leader for many of these processes that we need to implement on the project, like requirements and risk analysis and uh, things like scheduling. And I've learned how to do all of those processes uh, using systems engineering practices that we learn in the program. Uh, working on a project like the, uh, the Violet Satellite Project uh, I think is great for students because it exposes them to the kind of teamwork that you find in industry. Uh, you're not going to uh, get a problem and go to your desk and solve it by yourself necessarily when you're working at a company uh, as a professional. But uh, so the Violet Satellite Project exposes you to you know, solving a problem as a group. The first project that I was working on is, um, the name is Verizon Cornell Fleet Initiative, and there are essentially three objectives associated with it. The first objective is to um, provide a vehicle replacement and retirement strategy for the Verizon fleet, because currently a lot of their vehicles are in very bad condition, and also there exists a huge amount of redundant vehicles, and they wanted to find out ways how to get rid of these redundant vehicles without affecting their you know, normal business operation. And the second objective is to um, conduct a GPS business case um, regarding the cost and the risk associated with the installing GPS onto the Verizon fleet. And the last objective is to create a driving profile and um, you know, to study the driving behavior and to come up with incentive plans to encourage better driving behaviors. This project was actually initiated by Lowell McAdams, who is a Cornell alumni. He's the CEO of Verizon. So he actually gave a grant to, uh, to Cornell to do a series of projects, one of those projects being the Cornell Fleet Management Process. So fortunately, we've gotten a fair amount of funding, so that means we can do any kind of research we want, we can purchase the tools, the softwares that we need to analyze the data. One of the biggest challenges, and I think it was just really new for me, was that working with these huge information systems which have so much data, getting the right amount of data from them and analyzing that data, there's just so much learning there in terms of data marts, uh, predicting trends, regression analysis, um, k-means, clustering, There's, it's been a huge process of learning for me and I think the most valuable thing in terms of this project is that we've been able to come up with real recommendations based on projected simulations of saving for Verizon to use, which they're actually going to implement. So that's one of the most satisfying things, that you discover a problem, you find a solution and it's actually going to be implemented. I'm with the Cornell University Autonomous Underwater Vehicle Team. We're an entirely undergraduate student project team that designs and builds autonomous underwater vehicles for competition and research. These are robotic submarines that have to run a series of tasks fully independent of human control. Uh, so we use these vehicles for both competition and research. Our competition is held yearly at um, a transducer testing facility out in San Diego. Um, and it's an underwater obstacle com course composed of um, navigational, acoustic, and visual type mission tasks, simulating what AUVs have to do in industry. Um, we also use our vehicles for research in Cayuga Lake. Three times last summer we deployed off of the floating classroom project boat, the handle, um, to study vegetation growth and temperature in various parts of the lake at various times during the summer. The name of the project is uh, I think like Hasbro Toy Design, uh, with the goal of designing a toy for Hasbro, which is a toy company. So, and what we were trying to use as systems engineers is use like a systems engineering approach to um, basically understand Hasbro and its customers' needs and then design a toy to ultimately meet those needs. Along the way, I think I, I've learned uh, a bunch of different systems engineering tools. I mean, a lot of the tools I've learned in class, um, like the affinity process, operations uh, description template, um, analytical hierarchy, house quality, these are all things that we learn in our class. But what we're able to do in this project is actually start to apply them to real world applications. I'm a member of the Cornell 100 MPG team and we're building a car for the 100 mile per gallon competition that is part of the Progressive Automotive X Prize. And so we need to create a fuel efficient vehicle that beats the competition by being the fastest vehicle as well. Uh, we're made up of approximately 60 undergraduate and graduate members 
Uh, we've actually designed the car from the ground up. This competition laid out a huge hundreds of pages of requirements that we need to build our vehicle to. The state gave us pages upon pages of requirements we need to be street legal and we also have federal regulations that we have to meet uh, before our vehicles is allowed on the road. Well, see, the way the project fits into the program is that uh, it just pretty much shows you how important everything you learn is. For example, uh, project management or like requirements tracking courses, if someone wasn't in a project like this, they would probably think it was like a waste of time or just needless paperwork. But when you're really doing stuff like that, it, you really see how much it helps efficiency and gets things done. And I think that will really carry over to my career in the future.